what it takes to survive the crucible. Let's go. Ah, my leg! Ah! This marine. I can tell you what it takes. Not whining like that, my lord. A recruit isn't actually injured. My leg! Ah! <laughs> He's playing the role of a wounded marine during a simulated oh, casualty man. evacuation. All of you, draw faster now! Aye, Aye sir. 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 And his fellow recruits have to drag him inch by inch to safety. It's not a comfortable thing to carry someone on your back and drag them through the mud. Help! You sweat more in training, so you bleed less in combat. Mr. Soundbite Captain Obvious. Yeah, I guess. Whatever. <laughs> it's part of their final test at boot camp. Known as the Crucible. A 54-hour event that all recruits must complete. Fox, you're breaking down. I sir. Insider spent four days at the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in Paris Island, South Carolina, to chronicle one company taking on the challenge, the last step before officially becoming Marines. The crucible occurs in week 11 of the Marine Corps' 13-week boot camp. Aye, sir. The day before, recruits from the gender-integrated hotel company assemble in front of... Now, that would be interesting. So, we had BWT, effectively the same type of idea. We were out in the field for quite a while doing this shit. I can say I don't want any weak people on my team. Why? Because you're carrying stuff, carrying each other. If someone's weaker on your team, it affects everybody, right? Now, am I saying women are weaker? No, I'm not. And this would be very interesting. I'm sure it's successful. I'm sure it will be, but we'll see. Barracks for a briefing. Although female recruits have trained at Paris Island since 1949, gender-integrated companies didn't emerge until 2019. As of January 2021, Aye, this group of recruits was the most gender-diverse company of enlisted recruits in the history of the Marine Corps. Now, will that affect training? Of course it will. Of course it will. Maybe for the better. I doubt it. But just being gender integrated for the sake of being gender integrated doesn't make any sense. We want the most lethal fighting force, period. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what gender they are. I want lethality, right? Why? Because I want my grandson to do well if he goes to the Marine Corps to survive. Or granddaughter. I want the best person. I want the best surgeon. I want the best pilot. I want the best jarhead. And among those in hotel company are a brother and sister from Georgia, 21-year-old Lazaro Cisneros and his 19-year-old sister, Myra. My sister and me are here doing the crucible together. We're in the same um, company. We usually don't see each other often, but we always get like a glimpse of each other. It's actually motivating just being able to see him be there. I know that there's somebody here that knows me. He's going through this with me. He knows the pain I'm going through. At 0200 or 2 a.m., it's lights on in the squad bays of hotel company. Hit it, gun. Lights on, guns! Get on now! One, two, three, fifty-five! Get on that! We had to rush very fast. My question is, before we get into the training, we have to do this kind of stuff. Why don't we just gender integrate the barracks? You can bunk with a lady. Why not? I mean, in the field, that's what's going to happen, right? You're not going to say, okay, here's a separate area for the women. Just let's do it. Let's do it all out. So thinking about how the day was going to go. Recruits don their desert utility uniforms, known as desert camis. Fold the first sheet with you and your rack right now. Aye, sir. They square away their racks and ready their gear, which way... Now, does that make any sense to wear desert camis at Paris Island? Absolutely not. 
you know, a version, the new version, woodland, something. It's basically a pine forest where they're going to be doing this. Does it make sense for desert camis? No. Let's do things that make sense, for God's sakes. It's about 50 <laughs> pounds. While some recruits may be smiling now, they won't be for long. After one final trip to the head, the recruits form up outside to officially begin the crucible. We all understand what that means, right? Yes, sir! You should probably scream a lot louder. Aye, sir! Their first task, a long hike in the cold darkness. Yes, sir! It's approximately six miles in length, so nothing too arduous for the beginning, but just enough that they understand like, hey, you're on your own. We're not getting you bust out there. You're gonna walk out there just like you're gonna walk back. Five, five, four. So everyone get a count for your own team. When the sun comes up, the events of day one begin. Corporal Dunham immediately alerted his fellow Marines to the threat. Each crew. Now, a side note why not shave heads of everybody? If we're going to integrate this thing, let's do it. Shave everybody's head, bunk together, PT together. You know, that's where they want to go with this, or the government does, the military does. There could be some unique successes out of this. Why don't we do, like, college in India? They have a thousand slots, we'll call it. The thousand best people make it. I don't care what color, race you are, period, the best people make it. That's how it goes. No sliding scales, nothing. We're going to do this. Let's do it right. Let's go all in. Event is inspired by an actual occurrence in Marine Corps history. Corporal Dunham covered the grenade with his helmet and body. And before the event begins, the squad leader educates the group on its historical significance. He saved the lives of at least two fellow Marines. All gear should be on, you are facing forward. Light it up, two cones, pick it up. This group begins with an enhanced obstacle course. I don't know why you're smiling when you're struggling with a simple obstacle. Hi, sir. Huh? Get on the bar. So the obstacle course is out there. They've seen it all before. It's just now we're at That looks pretty weak. I mean, she's at third phase in boot camp, and she can't jump on that obstacle and get over it. I mean, you should be flying over those obstacles. It's pretty straightforward. You jump, grab it, throw your leg over, and you climb the obstacle. That's pretty sad. Adding a couple of more factors in there to make it more difficult. Now, they also need to safely transport 35-pound ammo cans across the course. All right, I got it. When recruits fail to negotiate the obstacle, Let's go. their drill instructor orders them to do burpees. And they're punished as a group. Although this recruit was able to conquer the obstacle, her fellow recruits were not. I'll let you get down to 15 burpees. At this point, you should be conquering every obstacle on this course. It's not hard. If you can't jump up and grab that pole and navigate that obstacle, I don't know how you complete boot camp. I mean, either make the obstacle smaller so they can pass them or don't pass people. Uh, I hate to be that guy, but you got to be able to climb these obstacles. This is not hard stuff at this stage in boot camp. So she had to pay alongside them. Two, two. I don't got no good. Go. Yeah, go. Grab right onto the damn bar. the bar. Wow. Look, it's not that hard, correct? I said, yes, sir. Only six hours into the crucible, and tensions are starting to flare. Yeah, you're still doing the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yo, you want to freaking roll your eyes at me? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. Because I literally just saw you do that. No, sir. So a lot of times they could get frustrated because they're cold, they're on. Wow. All I can say is, wow, if I can't imagine you guys chime in. Rolling my eyes at an instructor. He looked like he was an instructor. He wasn't a drill instructor from the looks of it. But if I would have done that, I just can't imagine. I wouldn't have done it. But I can't imagine the amount of shit you would have gotten, which you should have gotten. I didn't take that from my children. Boy, this is disappointing at best. Comfortable. No, sir. You got an action problem? No, sir. Execute the daggum training. 
That's a very common thing that we see. Oftentimes the recruits just correct themselves though, because at this point, they already know what's right and what's wrong. Fortunately, they'll soon have a chance to blow off steam when they step inside a structure known as the octagon. I want to see some fish. This is some intensity, dude. Ah! First, Get her in the thing! recruits fight each other with pugil sticks. They're tired. They're hungry. Now, you used to run in from separate directions in the octagon. So one guy would run from this way, one guy would run from the other direction. you meet in the octagon. It's almost like two dogs sparring or lions. So it used to be. I don't remember doing it static. Probably we did. Same thing. Now we're pitting them against each other. At some point, you are going to be face to face with somebody through all these conditions, and you're still going to have to be aggressive enough to win. The winner of the bout runs through a hatch below a sign that says Devil Dogs. Yeah. Winner, loser, go! Okay. The loser reports to the penalty box. Where they perform a series of planks and other exercises Play! intended to motivate them to avoid returning there. Get up, go away. And they soon get a chance to redeem themselves. All recruits face off again in one on one body sparring. I don't know, that pit looked pretty soft. I guess I'm getting old and crusty, but you guys tell me what you think. They were doing a plank, so what? Bends and thrusts, mountain climbers. So I, you know, make it go fast. Get your heart rate up. I understand planks are not that easy, but come on, man. This this needs to be better. I'm expecting better here. I think this is a way to just kind of keep them on their toes and keep them cognizant of their actions or the other person's actions. Recruits are only allowed to strike the body with no punches allowed above the neck. But stray punches do sometimes land. Right, now I gotta throw this gear away. And injuries can occur. All right, what company is this? Hotel company, sir. Hotel company? Yes, sir. There's a saying in the Corps that every Marine is first and foremost a rifleman. Recruits spend two weeks devoted to marksmanship during boot camp. Good to go? Yes, sir. During the crucible, recruits combine the skills they've learned on the firing range with movement in a simulated squad attack. All right, so at first, it's going to be cover and move. I see. All right? And then automatically, you're going to movement under fire, right? If people are shooting at you, you're automatically going to go to the prone, right? You're not going to give yourself that easy target, right? Yes, yes sir. sir. The squads. Boy, for those of you that have been to Paris Island, hasn't changed a bit from the looks of it. You know, looking at those pine forests there. Remember having shelter halves, right? Those of you that remember those, never worked. Always got wet, got sopping wet, hot, buggy, good times. Move together through a wooded area before they reach the entrance to the range. So you're going to stay tight to this tree line? You're going to run to that black tree. Go. Go, 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 go. Go right here. That's it. Roll in. Move. 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 Recruits fire blank rounds during the event. I keep looking to see if I'm watching this in slow motion. Like, you're running up. You're going to get down. Like, do it with violence and fast. I don't know, maybe it's just not my day to watch this, but these guys are moving slow as hell. Which simulates providing cover for their fellow recruits while they advance. You gotta call Stay back faster. to that form. Stay alive. Look at that. By now, these recruits have worked up an appetite. What is that? It's supposed to be Santa Fe rice and beans, by the way. Don't taste the rice. <laughs> They're used to going to the chow hall, getting three square meals a day. Now they're going to be receiving essentially field rations, right? Our meals ready to eat MREs. Now the peanut butter, jelly, and crackers. Now that was a nice piece of kit you got in the MRE. That was one of my favorite things. Dehydrated pork, no thanks. These are spicy. It's jalapeno. I know they're jalapeno. Typically, a single MRE counts as one meal. For the crucible, 
recruits have to ration five MREs over the course of the event. During breaks for chow, recruits are tasked with posting security. Over the course of the 54-hour event, <laughs> recruits sleep that? only three to four hours a night. Yes, sir. And this is where it happens, in structures known as sea huts. Let's go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. How tired are you right now? For now, I have like... I don't know why they're not doing it with shelter halves or whatever they've got now, why they're sleeping in those huts. I don't know that it really matters much, but setting that up, the old days with the shelter half, whoever you were bunking with, you know, it was part of it. I don't know why you need to do this. I don't know that adds any value. Energy left to complete the day. I've been trying to ration my food and been trying to keep a steady mind. Three more days before becoming Marine. For Lasaro, his day comes to a close with one of the most intense events of the crucible. Let's go, you gotta save his life! All right, sir. He's bleeding out and dying! A simulated casualty evacuation in a combat scenario. I right, take 40 seconds to bleed out! Listen, listen to him. Right, You're sir. freaking out! You're not making the right choices! All right, sir. No choice is still a choice! All right, You're sir. just standing there looking at me confused! All right, He's sir. already bleeding out! You just helped him slow the bleeding! All right, sir. You're being too slow. All right, You're sir. not communicating. No, Where sir. are you even going? You came from this direction. I sir. Fox, you're breaking down. I sir. Now I know that if you ever need to help anybody, you can't even help. You can't do anything. I sir. Because he's not okay. Because half sir. his leg just got blown off. I sir. And he's got a tourniquet on. I and he's sir. scared. And he doesn't know what's happening. Your lives are in your hands. Fox. You'll be all right, bud. We got you. Let's go. Just now this drill instructor gives a shit. It's the only one I've seen so far getting after the recruits at this. And why does it matter? Guys are tired. They need some instruction. This is training. You need to be told you're not doing it fast enough. It's not good enough. Pick up the pace. Let's go. I've been learning a lot lately. Combat training, combat care. This recruit noticed that he still has a lot to learn. Meanwhile, Myra attempts to negotiate one of the most intimidating obstacles on Paris Island, the 30-foot-tall stairway to heaven. Ready, step, step, together. Which all recruits must attempt without any safety equipment. Ready, step, step, together. I joined the Marine Corps with my older brother because of financial need. I was going to college, I needed the money, and the career I want to follow is pediatrician, so obviously I have to go to medical school for that. And I obviously thought, well, I need the money. Boy, that recruiter was happy. He got a twofer on those. Looks like they're going to make it, too, so good job, whoever that recruiter was. He just convinced us, and we joined. It turns out that having a sibling in training at Paris Island isn't that uncommon. We met another pair of siblings in hotel company. The relationship has grown stronger because at home we kind of just separated. We only played Xbox together from across the hall until we came here. We knew each other, but we didn't really like talk every single day like we have been for the past three months. Or... It's a pretty great feeling because whenever you think that you can't like turn to someone, you can always just turn to your actual blood brother. They're in the rear, right? Yes, sir. Tonight I'm going to basically pray a little bit for strength. As the sun sets on day one of the crucible, these recruits are in for a long night and an even longer day ahead. They used to do land nav out there, so you do day land nav and night land nav. And that's where people would try to cop some Z's on night land nav. You know, you had to go to these points and get it marked off. And the instructors would find your ass trying to sleep. And people had a hard time with land nav. I mean, I don't know what it is. They can't follow simple directions. They teach you. I think people just gaff it off. And they get out there and they're lost. They can't see where the hell they're going. Simulated casualties play a big part in 
one of the most challenging crucible events. The Battle of Way City, named after one of the bloodiest battles of Vietnam, where an estimated 10,000 people died, including more than 100 Marines. Loudspeakers place sounds of gunfire and explosions to create a more realistic combat environment, along with simulated mortar explosions that occur when a spark plug ignites a combination of propane and oxygen triggered by the push of this button. The goal of the event is for each fire team to maneuver across the area with all casualties and gear intact. Drill instructors designate recruits as casualties if they fail to conceal themselves during their approach. It's the responsibility of the still healthy recruits to transport the casualties. Recruits must climb over walls. Wow, those ladies are having a hard time with a simple wall. I'm not sure what to say about it. Just self-evident. Watch the video again. The link's in the description if you want to look at it. Maybe it's just the way it is now, right? Crawl through sand. Get him to the wire now. And barbed wire. Get the casualty off the Get the casualty. Off. He's bleeding out. All while slowly moving the casualties. I need assistance, help! Oh! Embrace the suck couldn't have been more true here. Once you embrace the suck and you look to your left and your right and you see the guys next to you doing it, it just makes you want to push even harder. And some of them will crack a smile and then you'll crack a smile. And it just keeps you going, sir. McDonald! Hi, sir! He's bleeding out! Hi, sir! Recruits who stay healthy and who don't have to tend to casualties are free to negotiate the course, as long as they don't do anything that catches their drill instructor's attention. Yeah, like sticking your ass up in the air. That recruit, the second one over, had his ass way up in the air. Now he's high crawling, but you know, you don't want to look like you're kneeling. At least be down low enough so you don't get your ass shot off. Event gets even more grueling in the rain, which is where we found Myra and her squad. Thanks to a passing storm, what began as dirt quickly turned to mud. My hip is starting to hurt and I had trouble keeping the weapon off the sand. So it was really hard this morning. The recruits move into the woods. navigate a series of obstacles as a team, which in the rain made things trickier for Lasoro and his squad. It has been very exciting pushing through since like the beginning of boot camp. Now those gloves look like the same gloves we had, which are not that great. They were kind of too thick. I don't know if they have to wear them or not, but I'd be ditching those. Wet, you lose your grip. They're not terribly fitting. You know, they're not the best thing for being out there, especially when they are sopping wet like that. To the end, and, and happy to be here with my sister, having a once in a lifetime moment. I've seen a lot of improvement in myself. I try to work on myself more, like, more than just physical. Recruits are invited to share their personal stories in sessions called Core Values. I've been pushing myself as much as I can, everywhere I can. And while I had the smarts for college, I never had the motivation. But somehow the Marines is the one thing I always had motivation for. The part of myself that I didn't have before, and I never really fit in anywhere else. That's the thing about this. So they're young, right? 17, 18 years old. They've never been told no, or they have, but not for three months. I think that's the takeaway where a lot of people can benefit. They have to do things they don't want to do. And the pushing yourself part is you're doing something you just don't want to do every day. And it's a good experience, I would say, for most people. And it's what you take from it. If you take from it, you're going to go party for four years and jerk around. And you become a dirtbag when you get out. Okay. But you can build from there. I think that's the real benefit for most guys that have gotten out, been successful. It's a stepping stone. 
you know, at 25, it's a different experience than at 18. As day two winds down, all that stands between these recruits and officially becoming Marines is a nine mile hike back to the parade deck. Well, it looks like they have the same type of stuff going on that when I was in. They renamed it and packaged it up differently. The integrated training is going to be interesting to see. We're doing it for lethality. We want the best people in the job, right? We want the most, most dangerous force on the battlefield. We stick with that goal. We should be successful.